I'm Yogesh Divedi, 1988 batch Indian Forest Service Officer of Tamil Nadu cadre. Basically, I come from Uttar Pradesh, but uh, my allotted cadre is uh, Tamil Nadu, so I have been working there for most of the time. My present posting is Additional Principal Chief Conservator of Forest and Director of Tamil Nadu Forest Academy. That is the job I do. And uh, as far as this training is concerned, as its comparison with other trainings is concerned, uh, the biggest comparison I can do is that uh, we go for practical trainings and compulsory trainings every year and uh, uh, most of other trainings are 90% of them are uh, dominated by classroom work. So the, to some extent this is good but then we don't realize that uh, human attention span is very short and 40, it is supposed to be it is said psychologically that about 45% of the time if you focus on a thing you can't focus beyond that. But I think most other trainings find it very useful to start from 9 and go up to 7 in the evening. And uh, sometimes one gentleman himself carries out the lecture for 2 hours, 3 hours depending on the convenience of those who are arranging the training and others. So even though practically training is done, but I have my serious doubt that uh, for a very small percentage of time only people are able to focus and how much they are able to grasp. So I had found that in, in a way the classroom part should be short and so it, here the good thing was that it was short. So practically that helped and then uh, the second part was that uh, many of the trainings are highly theoretical. That is people who have directly might not have done it. They might have studied somewhere and they simply uh, come and uh, regurgitate in front of us and just produce it. So now what happens uh, there also is uh, if you don't have direct experience maybe the it, it doesn't sound many times so convincing but here we had three persons who had directly been involved in uh, uprooting of let's say 2000 uh, more than 2000 adults from one place and settling them at another place and that was a herculean task and they had successfully done it and they were passionate about it. So that was a, uh, that passion came through, especially I would like to mention Mr. Girish, a bachelor who, who, whose passion was contagious, which was, it was, which was very visible. And like that also we had certain other members of Wildcat C and even the collector who was uh, uh, rather commissioner who was at deputy commissioner who was there at that time and the DFO who was there, they were all present there to directly uh, tell to us the experience they had in resettlement. So that way the best part of here was that people who were involved were directly communicating to us. So in a way I, I, I got to learn certain things that uh, I got to learn that it's very important to collaborate between different wings of the government. That is very important. The three wings because what happens in usually I have seen there's a big tussle between different wings depending on the post, depending on the service, depending on the route through which you come to that top. If you are a promoted IS officer, if you are a direct recruit IS officer, Indian Administrative Service, Indian Forest Service, there will be so many trusts. NGOs will be looked down upon, uh, not exactly looked down upon, will not be trusted. But here was a case that uh, there was one uh, NGO type of uh, NGO organization, Mr. Girish says, then there was the deputy commissioner, then there was the DFO and they, uh, they brought down all the firewalls between them and uh, pr uh, trusted each other. And they somehow had that passion and generated trust among the masses also, so that this uh, uh, resettlement process was possible. So the best part of the training was the directly learning from the people who did it. So doers can be the best teachers and that was the best part of this. So suggestion I will say to one or two only. The first thing I said was that classroom absence is important, but I think a little bit could have been added on other days also, maybe one hour in the morning or something, so that there could have been a direct link between, for example, second day what we were doing, if we had a one hour session in the morning and some idea about that, what exactly is we are going to do, rather than having in the field, that is a slight difference, even though in field we covered it, so maybe uh, a brief outline of what was to be done to, in, on that, uh, that could have been there. And a bit of, uh, it became a bit hectic, so it could have been slightly shorter, like, like last day, second last day which we are having today. So from 7 till 9, it becomes slightly uh, a, bit, a bit stretched. So that we can do, otherwise it was quite fine and the site was fine, the selection of place was fine and we, this was a learning experience plus uh, a kind of very nice tourism also. I think uh, as Napoleon Bonaparte said that impossible is a word written, or written in the dictionary of fools, so that is not the point. 
what can't be done in this world everything can be done practically possible things i am talking about but the point is it can't be repeated for one or two reasons maybe because see one of the things which is happening 20 years down the line population of the country is rising a lot and uh, distress between different wings is also maybe a bit higher on that uh, higher than what used to be there, there then and then bhadra relocation at that time uh, i have a feeling i should put it this way uh, mathematically speaking because i have more of math background it was a low probability event uh, three different persons like mr girish mr gowda and mr yatish coming together at a time at a place made it possible with that much passion now it's a very low probability uh, situation i'll put it this way 1 by 10 1 by 10 1 by 10 so it's 1 by 100 in in mathematical probability terms so yes probability of such thing happening is very low but then if it's a top down approach if supposing the government of the state itself becomes very eager for certain the settlement to take place from the top minister and chief minister dictated which i have seen in every state so if the government from the top wants it anything can happen and that can such things can happen very difficult no doubt because the point is that today in digital world we are living there can be so many forms of protest which i say which were not there in internet age and things can be so easily twisted so it will be uh, a very unlikely event it will depend on which side let's say social media can also swing it which was not a factor in those days but it can be a factor today so social media comes into play and these three wings comes into play I mean, probability of such thing happening is low but it's good also because people the same factor which i am saying are against are in favor also because even those such said people who are living in uh, let's say remote areas today will be much more aware because these people were not aware that what was being offered to them was in many way the panacea for their pro- uh, problems because their connectivity has improved like anything they, on one end they were so far for, away from civilization in a sense and now they are right there are the Uh, let's put it this way taluk headquarter type of place and we have a good road connectivity and all sorts of uh, telecommunication company connectivity so today i think some factors are even more in favor if such a settlement is to take place it can be explained to them and it's quite possible it's not that difficult i think especially those people and even this bhadra itself can be cited as an example to them so that's about thank you thank you